Hello, it's Nick and in this video I want to talk about Bing Chat and how we can use it for product design tasks. I want to discuss the advantages and limitations of this tool as well as share a few specific prompts that can be helpful for product designers. It worth mentioning that the tool allows you to generate text and images. It uses the power of GPT model and DALI image generator and it offers AI vision capabilities that allows you to use AI to analyze images such as charts. I will share a practical example of using AI Vision later in this video. The great thing about this tool is it allows you to choose the style of your conversation with the chatbot. It can be creative or more precise, depending on your goals. When you choose the option Creative, it will give the tool more power on how it can respond, so you will likely see that prompts is used only as a reference when AI provides a result. The next thing is a character limitation for your prompt. You can type a prompt up to 2000 characters, which is the size of a small document. So basically you can submit a few paragraphs of text and ask Bing to analyze them. Now let's submit our first prompt and see how the tool will work. I typically use Bing Chat for product research tasks but not as a replacement for research phase activities, but rather as an assistant that helps me move fast during the first steps of my research. So, suppose we are building a food delivery app, and I want to know how my primary competitor is doing. So, I write the prompt, what people like and dislike about Uber Eats. The tool tells us that it analyzes user reviews and mentions a few popular platforms that contains the reviews, such as Trustpilot. The result it provides has one important thing. We can see a link to the source of this information. So, unlike ChatGPT, which provides a response without any references, and we have either trust it or go to the search engine and validate it manually, Bing does all this work for you. It also features a list of resources that can be helpful for our future analysis. One important limitation that the tool has right now is the number of requests per single session. It's possible to ask up to five questions in a single session. What exactly it means? It means that we can ask four follow-up questions before the chat ends. And if we need to ask more than five questions, we need to start another session with Bing. Now, let me share a few great examples that I found useful for product research. We can ask Bing to generate product design ideas for specific type of a product. In our case, it will be a food delivery app. As you can see here, Bing generated quite an interesting list of ideas that includes features like food waste reduction and interactive cooking classes. Next is SWOT analysis for a particular product. SWOT analysis is a matrix with four sectors – strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats. It's a foundational tool in marketing and product design that allows us to evaluate your product strengths and weaknesses. Once again, Bing supported every major statement with a link to a specific resource and provides a list of helpful resources that we can visit to learn the topic. Next is creating a user persona. One of the challenges of working with AI tools like ChatGPT and Bing Chat is that sometimes the tool might fail to understand our intention. As a result, you need to write a follow-up question to clarify your goal and receive a relevant response. As you can see here, I wrote a follow-up question mentioning that I want to use this information in a product design and Bing generated the persona for me. Quite interestingly, the actual persona description is at the end of the segment response. Next is learning about user pain points. There are two ways we can collect insights about a product domain. We can either mention a particular product, like we did when we mentioned Uber Eats, or specify a category of products. And when it comes to learning about pain points, I believe that it's better to specify a whole category. Bing provides a very detailed response with statistical data from specific sources. Next is onboarding ideas. The great thing about Bing is that it uses all information from your current session when answering your question. For example, here you can see Bing knows that we've created a persona before, so it's kind of know our ultimate goal. Again, 
the fact that Bing also provides references to the sources makes onboarding recommendation more credible. You can use Bing to structure the information in a specific way. For example, creating a comparison table with your primary competitors. The table can be easily exported to Excel, and most data points mentioned in this table have backlinks to original sources of information. Market forecast. Bing is a search engine, and it has connection to the internet, meaning that it has up-to-date information, and that's why we can use it to things like market forecast, or trend prediction. Metrics and KPIs. When building a new product, you will likely need to define key metrics up front before starting an actual design process. And Bing Chart can help you with that. I would say that the list of metrics that the tool provides is very conventional for this category of products. You can expect to measure delivery time and delivery success rate when you are building a food delivery app. Law and regulations. We need to comply with government regulations when we are building products. Bing provides a summary of a key policies that we need to check before releasing a product on the market. Here you can see that the end of the chart will look like. You cannot ask another question without starting a new session. Lastly, here is an AI vision. What makes Bing really cool is that it supports AI vision, meaning that we can submit a specific image and ask Bing to analyze it. For example, here you can see I've submitted a table that compares popular food delivery apps and ask Bing to give me a list of companies from this table that offer free delivery. Not only was the tool able to extract this information, but it also validated it. So the information about Thrive Market, for example, has a link to the original source. So that's all guys. If you have more tips on using Bing Chat, please share them in comments below. Thank you.